Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Today we're discussing how to teach math the Charlotte Mason way. Now, if you're like me, I did not enjoy math as a child. I was someone who always had their nose in a book and I preferred to be reading or doing something creative versus doing sums. And that kind of went with me. I carried that through my school years and ended up choosing a vocation that didn't require a lot of math because of it. And I think that was a huge disservice to my own education because I feel like now as an adult, when I'm learning so much as a homeschool mother teacher, I'm starting to grasp math in a different way. So the way Charlotte Mason thinks about math is completely different from how I thought about math when I was growing up, and it's probably a lot different from how you think about math if you're not a fan. So I wanna talk today just a little bit about what Mason says about math and then how I'm carrying out that philosophy in our home um, and what our math lessons look like, and then I'm also gonna share a little bit about my favorite math curriculums that are kind of rooted in that Charlotte Mason philosophy. So if you're interested in learning more about that, stick around. So in Mason's book, Home Education, she has a section called Lessons as Instruments of Education. And she kind of just gives a brief um, summary and description of how she taught different subjects, right? Reading, writing, math, um, all the things. In the arithmetic section, she says, the chief value of arithmetic, like that of the higher mathematics, lies in the training it affords to the reasoning powers and in the habits of insight, readiness, accuracy, intellectual truthfulness it engenders. So she really is focused on teaching math as a habit and there's actually um, a beauty that can be found in math if the person that is teaching the child has a more um, higher level thinking about math and they, they view it as a true instrument rather than just learning rote sums or memorizing the multiplication table. She does mention that having manipulatives in the early years is useful, but Mason really wanted um, students to be working orally with their sums for many, many years before they picked up a pencil to do their math on, on a slate or a paper. So um, she also mentions in Home Education that it's important, this is on page 257, if you guys have your copy handy, and she says that it's important that math is a daily mental effort on the child's part at this early stage, and it may be the means of developing real mathematical power and certainly promote the habits of concentration and effort of mind. So rather than viewing it as a, a nuisance or something that you have to pick up and do, she kind of views it as more of a way of introducing um, habits like intellectual mental effort and clear thinking and um, careful execution. These are all things that are useful in all parts of our, our daily life, right? So there's also um, a magazine that Mason sent out called The Parents Review. And in the magazine that was sent to all of the parents, um, that were using her philosophy way back in the 19, early 1900s, um, a woman named Mrs. Stevens wrote, um, I'll link the article in the description, but she wrote about mathematics, and I love what she says here about Mason's approach to mathematics. This Mason called arithmetic number as being a much more comprehensive word for that subject, which under the name arithmetic was so apt to be thought of as only sums. She wanted the children to get a real sense of number, some vision of its innate power and beauty far beyond the sum of the moment. Arithmetic is learning about numbers, not learning to work sums. Miss Mason taught us that education is the science of relations and that a child should feel from the very beginning that his relations with number are opening up to him yet another realm of beautiful and wonderful things for his enjoyment and his delight. I just love that. When I read that, I'm so comforted because I really did not take delight and enjoyment in doing my math, but I want my children to. Um, she also wrote in the PR article here, it may be argued that this attitude towards mathematics or the appreciation of some of its fascina fascination and beauty is a gift only given to very few. And I'm not going to read through the rest of the quote, but she basically summarizes, um, she says that back 
Way back when, we believed that only the Beethovens and the Mozarts of our society could be really great musicians, but we know now that hard work and daily mental effort and practice can lead to a basic understanding and knowledge of musical ability. And in that same way, I just love this parallel because in that same way, we can, through daily mental effort and through a little bit of practice, um, we can, and a, a passionate teacher, that's another thing, um, we can learn how to do math and do it well and apply it in our daily lives. So that approach and just that way of thinking about math really changed um, how I taught math in my home. So, now that we've talked about philosophy, let's talk a little bit about what this looks like day to day. So to begin, um, Mason didn't start formal lessons until um, the child was six, right? But the, the child was exposed to talking with the, ch the mother or the governess back then, um, or talking with the mother or the siblings about math or being exposed to math through conversation, counting out the acorns they find in the yard or um, counting out how many fall leaves they found of each color. Sorting fall leaves by color is another skill that children are just every single day um, applying and they're able to kind of engage with math in the real world without even understanding that that's what they're doing. So because Mason kind of wanted children to be outside in those early years, it's sort of a natural way of integrating arithmetic, right? So from then when the child turned six, oral lessons were the main form that the, the math sums were given, and so they were through word problems, and that's what we use in our curriculum. We do all completely oral math, and my daughter is seven now, so she started that when she was six. And another thing that's really important is that the teacher doesn't have any preconceived notions about math that might um, inhibit the child's passion for it. So if you are not a huge fan of doing math and you're not a great fan of teaching it, you might kind of dread pulling out the book and getting started. And that's probably not great for your child. So as long as the teacher can have a little bit of passion and happiness about teaching it, so if the instructor can be excited about the beauty of math, then the child then can as well. Um, and that is important with anything that you're teaching your, your child, right? Um, so oral lessons in the beginning, um, and then she really talked about how important the foundation of learning the math is. Because if someone doesn't know their sums, two plus two is four, how can they learn their multiplication table and then later on apply that to algebra, right? So it's really important that we focus on um, building a really great foundation and passion for math in those early years. And Mason did that and we do that today through a practical application using word problems that relate to the child. When we lived in an Airbnb for four months, I would use the names of the horses because it was a horse farm and there was 18 horses and we were learning our sums zero through 20. So it was really easy to kind of get my child excited about her sums each day because we would be out feeding the horses carrots or feeding them. Um, we used to go around in a little golf cart and hand them their bowls each morning and it was fun. And so we got to do that and then we'd come in and do our sums and I would say to her, okay, Rusty had eight carrots and then Tonka came and ate six. How many are left? And so because I was excited and passionate about that and I knew my child could really relate to those words, it's a sum. It's eight minus six, right? But to her, it's a living idea. It's something that she's seeing each day and visualizing in her head. And that's why Mason says education is the science of relations and that's how we remember things. So with that daily mental effort, that passion, those oral lessons, not the workbooks, right? We can really make a beautiful foundation for um, a love and appreciation for math and number. Another thing to kind of remember if you have older children, um, using that practical application in the later years, so teaching your children about a bank account, how to save, um, you know, having a goal to save towards and then subtracting how much they need to find from that, or learning how to balance a checkbook. Um, maybe it's not a skill we would use now, but it's still a useful skill if they're going to do any sort of bookkeeping or own a business or want to go into accounting. So it is still useful um, and there are many vocations that require a really good foundational understanding of math. So try to find what your child is passionate about and really connect it in that way. 
Um, I have a friend who her child loves to make money. He's just a little entrepreneur. And so she'll take him around the neighborhood and he'll collect cans and bottles from his neighbors. And then he will take them and recycle them and make a ton of money that way. It's like a little business. And it's such a wonderful opportunity to um, integrate math into everyday life. So um, if you are interested in you know, having your older kids kind of learn that, there's some good like bookkeeping programs. I'm gonna link to one that I have on my docket for when my children are a little older that I would like to buy. But all that to say, let's talk about a few of my favorite math programs that you can use in the early years. Um, my favorite, the one we use in our home, I actually have a video review on it, so you can check that out. It's called the Simply Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic Series. Right now, um, it's by Rochelle Babarina, and it, right now there are four books, book one, two, three, and four. We are on book two. Um, and so that is a wonderful program. It has all been oral up to this point, and it's a very um, just, it's rooted in a great understanding of math and Rochelle herself is so passionate. She's actually an artist. That's what I love about her. She's a math person, right? But she is an artist too. And you can be both. You can be creative and be really good at math. It's, it's just wonderful. So I love that program. I'm gonna link it in the description and I'll also link to the video um, review that I did on it. And then another one that I really like is Beauty and Truth Math. And they have a website that you can look at and I believe they have it for later years as well. Mason um, actually separated math into three categories. It was arithmetic, algebra, geometry, and so she would divide those up and they would just cycle through those over and over in their forms or their grades. So yeah, um, those are two that I would recommend if you really want to have that good Charlotte Mason um, based uh, math curriculum. So check those out. If any of you have one that you feel like is very Charlotte Mason based, meaning early years is no workbook and mostly uh, manipulatives and oral lessons, then um, definitely comment below and I'll try to add that to the links if you guys have a good one that you recommend. But yeah, I hope this was helpful for you guys. We can all truly have a, a love and an appreciation for math just like we can develop that for anything in life, music, anything art. So. Um, um, hopefully this changed how you view it and how you teach it in your home. If you have any questions or um, would like to chat about it more, I'm happy to talk in the comments. Also, if you're interested, uh, I have a Patreon for all of the people that are interested in learning more about how a Charlotte Mason education looks in, in our home. I have a few day in the life videos. I have a little bit about meal planning and how I manage all of that side stuff that's not homeschooling. Um, so if you're interested in joining that, I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description. I also started a podcast. Um, if you enjoy the content here on YouTube, I think you would really enjoy the podcast. I made it a goal to have the podcast episodes be no more than 20 minutes, so you only have to spend a tiny bit of time listening to them but I really try to put as much goodness as I can and share all the things in there um, as quickly as I can and as succinct and precise as I can so if you're interested in checking it out I'm also gonna link that below as always thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video